Awesome. So I'm going to start with a quick introduction. Welcome, everyone. If we are meeting for the first time, my name is Habiba from The Trekking Pals, and uh, this is our weekly live stream on Instagram. We've been doing this for the past three months. We're bringing travelers from all around the world to share their travel stories and their travels around the world. And today I'm so excited because I'm joined by Iman and Mehdi from Wild Curlies. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very excited to, to meet you guys virtually, and uh, I really admire a lot of your travels, and I can't wait for all of the folks who are watching us today to, to hear about your stories and to get to know you today. Thank sure, you. sure, we can't wait either. Rio, come over here. Rio. Oh, Rio is joining too. <laughs> Hi, Rio. Hi. Hi. This is our little puppy. His, his name is Rio. Hi, Rio. Good boy. <laughs> All right, so let's get things started here. Uh, Iman and Mehdi, if you guys want to go ahead, introduce yourself, well, uh, your travel story, how did it all start, and then we'll take it from there. Okay, you go ahead. Okay. So Mehdi and Iman, we, uh, we're a couple, we've been married for six years already. And we both enjoy traveling, we enjoy trails, we enjoy all kinds of adventures, actually. Uh, we met uh, about 10 years now? Yeah. 10, 12 10, years? 10, 10, 10, 10, years. 10 years ago. We've been both working for this uh, international organization called ISEC, for the ones who know what it is. So it's, uh, it's about like social work, it's about leadership, it's about public speaking. I mean, we, we develop a lot of, lot of these skills among uh, young uh, young Moroccans and also internationals. So we met in a conference and we kept in touch. We became friends for, so, yeah. for some time. And then uh, we discovered both that we love the same things, uh, like traveling, like uh, climbing mountains and, uh, and all, stuff. Yeah, all the outdoors. Yeah. So we've been, uh, we've been trying all of that for the uh, six, seven. Yeah, at least seven years. Yeah, now. seven years now. Awesome. And uh, for, for those who don't know you here, you are originally from Morocco and uh, you're currently Morocco, living Morocco. Yeah. Born, born and raised. Yeah. <laughs> 100%, 100% Moroccans. Yeah. I mean, currently we, we were living in France, but yeah, we're definitely Moroccans. Born and raised in Morocco and now living in Europe. Awesome. It's always exciting to see Moroccan couples who travel together. I didn't get to see a lot of that growing up. So when I found out that you both are Moroccan, I was like, yes, that's superpower. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So how did you get into travel? How that travel bug hit you? When did you start traveling in your journey? So uh, for me pers personally, uh, I first started traveling in Morocco. So within the country uh, with my parents. And that's how I became really interested in discovering new cities, new towns, and uh, just see new landscapes because you have so many different landscapes in Morocco. Uh, and then thanks to my parents, again, I had the chance to travel abroad to see new countries. So I saw Thai Thailand and Tunisia first. And that's how like I said, okay, I, I need to do more of that. I need to see the world. Uh, especially when I went to Thailand, it was amazing because, you know, it was the first time I went to Asia. I was still young and it was completely different from what I've known for the past uh, few years. So that's how it started. Uh, and then uh, it kept going on with ISEC, so the organization that Mehdi told you about. I had the chance to go to Russia for a few weeks uh, and I stayed, I stayed there in St. Petersburg. And I just loved it again. So that's how it started. And then we kept doing the same once we met for our honeymoon. And then just for, you know, each time we had a few days off, we would like say, let's go somewhere. Not necessarily far away, but if we could, we could go somewhere a bit far to discover a completely different new culture, we would. And if not, we would just go uh, to the next town to see something different. So that's how I... I lived it, yeah, that's my experience. I think both, both of us are curious. We, we're both curious. We both like, in, we enjoy actually meeting new people. We enjoy mm -hmm. hearing their stories, learning from them. And we, we enjoy so this uh, cultural diversity and, 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 you know, all that comes with, with traveling, not only, the, you know, not only the hotels and the, the good places where you just mm -hmm. chill and, 
and enjoy your time, but also the part that you, you get to learn things about people, about the culture, about the place. And uh, yeah. That's so, awesome. Yeah. Do you guys, I'm just out of curiosity, do you guys get to travel a lot with Rio as well? We, so four countries. Yeah. We, yeah, I think he's been to four countries, maybe. Already. Three or four. Uh, he's one yeah. year, actually. We, we just Aww. got him yeah. last, last February. So he's, he, he just he's completed his one year. Aww. And we get to travel when the chance presents itself. Sometimes it's difficult. For example, when we're planning to go to Africa uh, two, mm. two months ago already. Yeah. So we were planning to go to Cameroon and then to Gabon. But uh, we were afraid that we, if we take him, you know, Africa, things are not always uh, straightforward, not always the rules are not really clear. So we're afraid that we can have some trouble with them and we will have to t either cancel our trip or have to send them back. So that's the only time that we, we didn't travel with Rio. But uh, yeah, all the time, whenever we get the chance to travel, we take him. Uh, we chose this, this little puppy, actually. It's a, it's a breed that doesn't grow. So we could oh. just put him in backpacks or we can put him in, 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 uh, <laughs> or in the bike. <laughs> yeah, on the bicycle and then we, we, we just, we just hit the road. And he's full of energy. So, I mean, what we try to do is to adapt our travel. So usually when it's just the outdoors, it's really easy for us to bring him along. But it's true that when we travel someplace where we have to take public transportation or go to some, closed door spaces, it's a little bit more tricky, but we try to adapt our travels accordingly. And we love the outdoors, so that's just another excuse for us to go out there. There's a comment from Huda, she's saying that Rio seems so happy. <laughs> of course. That's cute. <laughs> that's awesome. I mean, he makes us happy as well, so yeah. Yeah, Aww. That's really sweet. Um, so I'm curious to hear more about your trip in uh, Turkey. I've been following you even before the trip, and I know that it's something that just happened last minute, but it looks like you guys have a wonderful time traveling in the country. Tell us more about that trip. Tell us about the planning, and what are some of the places that you visited within Turkey? You want me to go ahead? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So, yes, definitely that was not planned at all. So, as Mehdi was saying, initially we were planning to go to Africa, so to Cameroon and to Gabon. But because of COVID and uh, the restrictions, our flights were canceled. And then, so we had, I think, three or four days to decide on where we wanted to go. Uh, and Mehdi has the had the idea. He said, okay, why not Turkey? Uh, Actually, it, it, what I did, I just went to Skyscanner sure. and put, let's go anywhere. And I found the cheapest flights. <laughs> that's, that's how it awesome. <laughs> came. So, yeah, I mean, Turkey was not expensive. Uh, we didn't need visa to go to Turkey. And we just booked our flights two or three days before departure. And we bought the book, Le Routach, with all the information about uh, the country. And we didn't really do uh, much planning before. Uh, we just, the thing we did is that we checked the main places we wanted to visit just to have an idea. What we were sure or uh, certain of is that we didn't want to stay in Istanbul for too long or in big cities. So we wanted to visit Istanbul, but we mostly wanted to visit the area and the rest of the country. So we just draw uh, an itinerary and, and, and yeah, I think we did maybe around 10 yeah. cities or something like that. So wow. that's how we it's just like a frame, you know, we, we wanted to, to do like a frame around the, around the, 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 the country. Mm -hmm. And we didn't do much of a planning, which is has some inconvenience, but also have to have the advantages to have this flexibility mm -hmm. where you just decide where you want to go and you just hit the road and, and, and go discover the place. And the good thing about it is that the people who are following us, uh, they were giving us a lot of advice. Like, uh, if, you, if you guys are there, you should visit this place. If you guys are there, you should visit this place. So this is how we, how we went. And uh, pretty much, uh, do you have the planning? Yeah. Ah, okay. So this is what we did in the big can you, can you hold me? Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we did. We just went to the map and we wanted to do like a tour around, this, around the country. That's all we did. Okay. with some stops that we put here. We put the prices also of the transportation, uh, the names of the cities, and that's it. That's Once awesome. there, we knew that we needed to follow this path, 
Uh, but around the path, there are a lot of places that we didn't even know, didn't even mention in our planning. And we just followed the advice and we were really happy to go there mm. because there are some really beautiful places there. That's awesome. So it started from Istanbul. It started from Istanbul. Mm. We spent, uh, we, we, we arrived to Istanbul on the 13th, 31st at midnight. So it was like party all over, all over the place and it, it was huge. Mm. And then uh, the following day, we just we just saw Istanbul, like just quickly, just went to the main attractions or the main places. And then the following day, we went from Istanbul to Çanakkale. So Çanakkale is a city around the 400 or 300 kilometers yeah, from Istanbul, maybe 400. south. Yeah. Mm. And Çanakkale is known for the for the you know the movie Troy with Brad Pitt. Yes. yes. <laughs> It's, it's it, the Chanakale. There is this 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 place uh, called. I mean, this it's not a city now. It's just uh, just West, ruins, with ruins Troy, yeah. with 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 the with the, with the Troy. The historical site. Yeah, historical site of Troy. So we get to visit Troy, and then on the way back we saw that it was uh, already like five p.m. Turkey, what is good about Turkey, it's really safe. I mean, you just look for a spot, you put your tent, you pitch a tent, and then you, you spend the night. And you have dogs like following you all, the, all over the place, uh, protecting you actually because they're, you, they're used to, to humans. Then from Troy, we, we were talking to this friend from Turkey who said, you know, you know, guys, if you go into Çanakkale, if you went to Troy, you should maybe keep going to Assos. We never knew about Assos yeah. before. But the only way to go to Assos is either you, you rent a car or you hitchhike. Because there's no other, other way to go there. So we went to the uh, went to the highway. We walked like four kilometers, and then we started hitchhiking. <laughs> and there was this really really nice guy from uh, from the Netherlands. He saw us hitchhiking, and he 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 did like a detour, and he said, mm -hmm. "You know, guys, I used to hitchhike a lot in, when I was younger, so I can take you whenever you want." Mm -hmm. So he just took us to, to Assos, and then and then and then we. Uh, we enjoyed Assos. Assos was a, was yeah, a really good surprise. We enjoyed it much more than Troy, honestly, because Troy was kind of flat, just a bunch of rocks. I mean, it has a history behind it, but it was flat. There was nothing to see, actually. You yeah. just got to imagine. You just imagine <laughs> that there were walls there, that there were entrances, and yeah, that's that. It's all imagination, yeah. but there's nothing concretely that you could see. Yeah, but in Assos, we definitely enjoyed our, ourselves more there. So Assos yeah. is massive, yeah. It's, 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 yeah, it's wow. really amazing. Uh, so, from, uh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, just a question. I was wondering, just for people who are watching us, how much time did you spend overall exploring the country? Because you're mentioning a lot of, lot of places, a lot of cities. How much time did you spend overall? We really? spent two weeks, but it felt like we spent months, actually. <laughs> wow. Because what we, were doing, what we were doing, we were taking always the night bus, so it would save time. So we spent the night, spend, spend the whole day exploring the place. Either we spend the night in our tent, if we think that it's worth to spend more time. Otherwise, we take the night bus and, and we sleep overnight and then we start the following day. Yeah, and the next morning you open your eyes and you're like six or 700 kilometers uh, wow. from your point. And that's, that's, that's great. I like uh, the fact that you guys are making this trip budget friendly because definitely when you are camping outside, it saves a lot of money that you could be spending on accommodation. So there were no regulation, no restrictions as far as where you can pitch your tent and spend the night. Not no, really, not, not really. really. I mean, we, we're used to, to that in, in France. It's prohibited actually to pitch a tent anywhere because you have to go to campings. It's for safety reasons, but it's also, you know, there are restrictions and, they, they just don't want you to, to do it. So, but we still do it in France, even though it's prohibited. We just hide, we just go, you know, when it gets dark, we pitch the tent, like really somewhere where no one can see us. And then early in the morning, we just pack our stuff and then we leave. And that's what we did in Turkey. But in Turkey, apparently it's really friendly. I mean, mm -hmm. ca camping or, or, or let's say, uh, you, ca you can pitch your tent anywhere you want. And, or you can ask people. Yeah. Or you can ask people that a garden. They would say, "Yeah, come, come over." It's uh, and they're wow. curious to see like, foreigners traveling with the, with a tent. So it, it it gives you the opportunity to have like really interesting discussions and and get into know the people and and stuff. 
That's awesome. And uh, Turkey is known for, for hospitality, so I'm sure that people are a lot friendly compared to other countries, right? I would say even more friendlier and more hospitable than Morocco. We, we're oh. known to be really hospitable yes. in Morocco. <laughs> in Turkey, they are that, that, that. A little yeah, bit, little yeah, bit, yeah. a little we bit more. It. Yeah, we yeah. felt that. Maybe also because we were not only in big cities, we went to smaller towns. Uh, but overall, we always felt very safe. It was very secure and people were really nice with us. Yeah. Okay. So before we go back to your itinerary, I see a couple of questions in the chats here. Uh, we will get back to the questions later on and we'll make sure that we address all of them. Okay. So ba back to the itinerary. <laughs> So from, um, from Assos, we went to uh, Selçuk. Selçuk. So Selçuk is not an interesting city. It's a, just a small city, but there is Ephesus, just a few, few kilometers away. And Ephesus is one of the seven wonders in the world, which is really amazing. So from Selçuk, we took the night bus again, woke up in Selçuk, had breakfast, then walked a few kilometers, got to Ephesus. Ephesus was just yeah. stunning. I mean, that's... I never imagined that I that I would see all of these great things or in in Turkey because we don't know this 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 face or this part of Turkey. We only know Istanbul, you know the food, the oh, beaches, you know. But this part of Istanbul is full of history, and uh, and it's something that uh, really amazed us once there. In uh, in that place, we met this American. Who's uh, he's he's Portuguese American and he's uh, uh, that was interesting because we met and the, at the entrance we started mm -hmm. just talking and then the guy said you know what why don't we just visit it together and then get to know each other why not we went there started talking and the guy is about like sixty years old he's close to retirement and he was telling us that he's his second time in Turkey and he's planning to move to Turkey for his retirement. Wow. Because, yeah, because he loves the city, he loves the, he loves the place, and he found that it's really affordable to get, like, a house in front of the beach, and with his retirement pension, he could just live like a, like a king in Turkey. So That's awesome. We spent a really good time with him, and then he took us, that was the free ride again, <laughs> he took us from <laughs> Selçuk to another Kushadasi. city called Kushadasi, which is really beautiful also. Okay. Awesome. So it's really nice to be able to meet all of these people from around the world and here help each the other. It's the purpose, actually. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, we met Turkish people, but we also may, met several uh, foreigners who were there, and that's also nice. I mean, you get to meet really different uh, people with different backgrounds, which is definitely nice. Yeah, and we kept in touch with all of them. So. And this is when you yeah. realize that language is not a barrier, actually, because mm -hmm. a lot of Turkish people don't even speak English. And you get, you're able to communicate with them. You're able to, I mean, just, uh, I don't know how, how it happens, but we understand them somehow and they understand what we're saying. Yeah. So it was amazing. That's, was that your guys' first time in uh, Turkey or have you traveled before to, to Turkey? I've been to Turkey before. I've been there in 2010, uh, but I didn't get the chance to see much because it was, uh, I was there for a conference. I mean, with this association, this organization, I spent four days like working uh, in Bursa and then just four days sightseeing, sightseeing Istanbul. But that's all I knew about Turkey. But this time it feels like it's the first time that we, we go to Turkey actually. Yeah, that's awesome. It was, yeah, the, first it was time. the first time. And to be honest, I didn't expect to see everything that we, we saw uh, while traveling there. And as you were saying earlier, it's so diverse. I mean, there is the oriental part of the country, but there's also so there are so many historical sites that you would only imagine to see in Greece or in Italy, for example. And you see like so many beautiful places and you know it's so varied and different landscapes everywhere so that was really nice yeah all the different things that we saw yeah were there any uh, cultural nuances that you guys noticed that were pretty impressive or that you didn't expect in in turkey uh i'm thinking about the when you want to give a tip to someone yeah. In Morocco, they like kind of expect you to give them a tip whenever like they serve you. I think everywhere, you know? everywhere. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, but the, the waitress is always expecting a higher, I mean, a tip. 
But in Turkey, it was a little bit different. They were like, are you sure? It's like if you're giving them something big, you know, they're not really expecting it from you. And when you do, for them, it's an important gesture. And they don't want it. They don't want it at first. They would say, yeah. is, it, is it halal? I mean, that's only what, what we understood. Halal, halal, is it okay? I mean, is it really, sure? do you really want to give me a tip? And then oh. we say, yeah, it's, it's the one they want they, yeah. to get. It. Especially if it's a big tip, like you get along with the person and you want to, you know, give them a little bit more than usual. They say like, are you sure? Is that halal? You know, is that okay? And, and then they give you something for free <laughs> yeah. afterwards. Oh. Hey, not, hold on, give us a tip. Hold on, hold on. We're going to make something for you. And they just give you something else. Like a sandwich yeah, or, you know, something to eat or to uh, a souvenir or so on. You know. So That's I think awesome. that was the, the main thing that I yeah. remember. Other than that, it's pretty similar to our Moroccan background, I, I guess. Some things are similar. Some other things, you, I mean, you just learn them on the way, but it's, um, yeah. There's also this, uh, this diversity because mm -hmm. in Turkey you get to see, you know, when you go to our countries, you see a lot of mosques, you see a lot of people, you know, with the hijab, with the, with the beards. So you see that, you know, the, these people are really religious. In Turkey, you see like uh, mm -hmm. both extremes. I mean, you can, you find a guy with, with a big bird, I mean, like that, and, and speaking to, to a guy with a lot of tattoos, and then there is a there is a tra tra transgender just coming and saying hi and, and moving forward. And people are really so open about all of that, yeah. which uh, which was quite surprising because even in Europe, there are a lot of taboos about certain things. Like for example, you know, the, 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 the people would still ask questions. Would be like uh, you know when they see someone, Different. they would judge them by their looks. In Turkey, you don't feel that people are quite judgmental. You know. Yeah, yeah, especially in Istanbul. That was yeah. that was quite surprising for us. True. Wow. I mean, even compared to France, to Paris, which is like the you know the capital, uh, we totally, definitely felt a difference in Istanbul. I was like, even me, I was. It like, was more open, wow. actually, more open. Yeah, like yeah. you could see uh, different people, and like it's okay to be different, and uh, you can wear a scarf, and another girl could just wear a very very tight uh, skirt. You can have a trans trans person just walking by you, and it's all totally fine. And, and people talk, it. and it's okay. I mean, they, they don't feel yeah. like judgmental, or they 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 they're like you know feeling mm -hmm. uncomfortable just having each other with with all these differences. So mm -hmm. that was uh, that was. Uh, I mean, we're aware that it might be different in smaller towns or in sure. the east part of the country, definitely. But, you know, taking a big town like Istanbul or Antalya, for example, yeah, we definitely felt yeah. really comfortable there and it was so accepting of people. Yeah, that's interesting because uh, Turkey is a very hot destination. A lot of travelers, I know that for Morocco, it's uh, a hot travel destination because there are not a lot of restrictions for visa and such. But even here in the U.S., because especially solo travelers, especially for mm -hmm. women who travel solo, they feel a lot safer in Turkey compared to other countries in the Middle East or, or, or Asia, which is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. All right, so uh, we'll start taking a look at some of the questions. Uh, Huda has a question for you. She's saying, how do you guys organize yourselves, get motivated to make many trips along with work and daily life duties? Do you make like targets? This month I should see two new towns or how do you go about managing and planning? Uh, I would say there's not a lot of that actually. We don't we don't do a lot of planning. We just know that every whenever we have time, we gotta do something. We can't just stay home. For example, we don't have TV. I mean, we have TV, but we don't even watch it. It's just it's there. not plugged. Uh, so most of our time, we just like we like to discover new places, and we know whenever we have time, we, have, we gotta go somewhere. So we have places in mind. For example, I really want to go to Russia just to see mm. how, how it is. Yeah. We want to go to, to Africa, definitely. We, I mean, Iman is, is kind of the expert in Africa. She's been there for so mm. too, too many countries in Africa. So I want to go to Africa to discover some, some countries. Iman, she wants, to, to, she, she wants mainly to discover Eastern Europe because uh, she, she doesn't know much about these places. I've been living there, so I, I can show her around. Asia, uh, Australia. Asia. So we have places in mind. <laughs> so many countries. But at the same time, whenever we have, like, every weekend, for example, we know that we got to do something. 
every weekend, even in France here, if, if we have, get the chance to go somewhere that we've heard of, that it's a good place, we just go there. I mean, I think that's how I, you know, perceive things is, is that you don't have to wait to have like so many days to travel somewhere far. If you have just two or three days off or, you know, just a weekend, try to discover something new because you might live in, in an area, but there are so many places that, uh, that are still there to discover. So that's what we try to do when we don't have much time because we work unfortunately that's you know we have to work uh so we can't just keep traveling like this every month but what we do is we try to go uh hiking or biking or just go into a different town we prefer the outdoors so usually it's something in nature rather than, than just a town but we just go we just say we need to go this weekend for example and then we Please. There's not much planning, actually. And, and, and you mentioned something really amazing is that we, we always try not to spend a lot of money whenever we... Because the less we spend, we give ourselves more opportunities to do more things. So uh, we're really careful about the spendings. For example, when we go somewhere, we just try to get either accommodation for free or even food. If we, try to, if we get it for free, that's amazing. If we don't get yeah. it for free, then we pay for it. But... Uh, yeah, we try not to, to be overspending whenever we go somewhere. That allows us to do more, actually. Yeah, I mean, even so, sometimes we cannot just camp because you, you're in a town or city where you're, you can just pitch your tent. So we try to find the cheapest hotel, you know, to find the right uh, combo between comfort and budget as well because we just spend the night there. We don't spend the whole day. So we just need somewhere where to sleep and be safe. Uh, usually it doesn't uh, it doesn't cost much yeah. so that's what we try to do right and i like what you mentioned iman your your adventure doesn't have to be far away sometimes you can just explore the trails that are nearby and that itself is is a great way to to explore the outdoors and such yeah. i mean sometimes we go just for a weekend just overnight you know we go on saturday and we come back on sunday and it feels like we've been out for four or five days because it's somewhere completely new in the middle of nowhere but it's not too far from home so yeah awesome um so i saw that you are planning or preparing for a big race that's also happening in turkey i want to yes. know a bit more about that that sounds really exciting <laughs> that's something that we learned actually on, on our last day in Turkey. We went back to Istanbul and we, uh, we get the chance to meet an old friend from Ima, of Iman. Yeah. She got in touch with us. I mean, she, she, she hasn't seen Iman, I think, for seven years. Since or... 2019. Yeah. Yeah. Since graduation. So, yeah. 2019. Uh, 2014. 2014. 2014. Oh, wow. So, she got in touch. She said, you know what, guys? I'm in Istanbul. If you, if you don't have a spot, if you're not planning, you can come to my place. Mm -hmm. And we went. We met, we met her. We spent the night. The following day, we were supposed to, to just go see some other people that wanted to meet us. And we met this girl who was, um, who was a trainer, actually, in her gym. She doesn't speak any English, but we, again, we were able to communicate. And she told us, you know, guys, you would be, maybe would be interested about this race. It's actually crossing the Bosphorus, and it's like 6.5 kilometers, and it's done every year. And he said, tell us a little bit more about it. He said, well, you go to this website uh, and then you just register as, as you want to you wanna, you wanna do it. The only, the only catch here is that you have to train because to get accepted, you have to do like 800, km, 800 meters under 15 minutes. Yeah. So that's the thing. So we said, you know what, let's like take the challenge train. and yeah. let's go back to Turkey just to cross that, that Bosphorus. It's a cross-continental swim. Uh, I mean, during COVID, they stopped it. Uh, and now, for example, the next this year, it's going to take place. But there is a quota for uh, foreigners. And it's. I think it was gone after 30 minutes yeah. or an hour. They opened it for 30 minutes. Wow. It was already... Yeah. yeah. So the plan for us is to register for next year. So basically, we have one year to prepare. Uh, it's not going to be easy, but we're really looking forward to it because it's too long, you know. 
like 6.5 kilometers. We never thought we yeah. would do that. Wow. But uh, we barely swim one kilometer actually in the swimming pool. So <laughs> 6.5 yeah. is going to be. <laughs> It's going to take us, yeah, several hours to complete. But uh, we really want to do it. And the good thing about social media also is that when we announced that we wanted to do this, uh, this, this challenge, uh, we got in touch with, uh, with Noor, who is a Moroccan athlete. Actually, she's, she, she's, she's mm. a professional swimmer. And now she's uh, sharing with us like tips and programs that we could follow in order to get in better shape and, and in, uh, I mean, just to, to be ready for the 6.5 kilometers, which, yeah. is, which is amazing. And she used to live wow. in Turkey. She knows about it and she used to train with the Turkish team there, swimming, swimming team. So she's given us training program that we're following and it's, uh, it's really fun. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That sounds amazing. I wonder if you guys are the only Moroccans in that competition. Do you know if there are any other Moroccans? <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, I don't, I'm not sure there are so many Moroccans, but yeah, we'll look into it. Yeah. I mean, since the places wow. are limited, uh, yeah. maybe, maybe we will be, but we, we, we yeah. We'll try to, to, we'll to know. Check. Yeah, we'll check that. Well, we, we're going to be rooting for you guys. You, you have to, to go and kick some ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll be wearing flags, Moroccan flags, you know. In the yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. This is exciting. It's, it's always fun to travel with a purpose. I think that seeing new places is good and staying in hotels or going to see, you know, monuments and such. But if you travel for a big challenge like this, it's more rewarding, I feel like. That's for sure. That's for sure. Awesome. So um, we've been going for about 30 minutes and I think we still have some time. Now, um, for someone who's traveling to Turkey for the first time, um, no matter where in the world they're coming from, they're new travelers, what are some of the tips that you have to, to share with them? Not about the itinerary and places to visit, but just safety tips and then things that they should keep in mind. Um, something that I think is important, especially if you're traveling on a budget, is to take the bus. They have an amazing uh, bus system. Uh, the roads are really good. So you don't have to rent a car or take flights to go from one city to another one. Uh, so we did a lot of that. We took several buses and it went really well. Uh, they also have a lot of public transportation uh, options. So it's better to than to just take a taxi, for example. Tax a cab can be uh, convenient, uh, especially in big really cities. Really expensive. But it's more expensive, and you find. And there's a lot of scammers also. Yeah. You know they would yeah. they would just like overcharge you because exactly. you're a foreigner, you don't know. So they would they would find a way to overcharge you. An example of that when we arrived to Chanakale and we had to go to Troy. We asked a cab driver how much we would pay if he would take us there. And he said 200 uh, lira. And yeah. then we looked for a dolmush. So it's like a minivan and it takes you from one place to another. And it was 15, 15. per person. So 30 liras for both of us instead of 200. So okay. uh, just an example. And that's how we learned that we should just go and ask and check the prices before we do that. So that would be one of the tips that I would give is just to take the bus and hitchhike if you can, if, if you don't find any other option. Uh, it's easy and it's not expensive. It's very cheap. Um, okay. I would say don't spend too much time in, in, in Istanbul because most of the people when they go to Turkey, they go to Istanbul and they stay in Istanbul. And there's, of course, there's a lot of things to see in Istanbul, but there's not only Istanbul. That's, that's, that's my point. I mean, there are a lot of great places that worth the visit and, and, and spending time uh, trying to, 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 to see these places that are worth it more than Istanbul. Most of my friends, when they go to Turkey and we start talking, they say that they only spend like 10 or 15 days in Istanbul, you know, wow. going from museum to museum, going to, because the, Istanbul is really interesting. It's big. Yeah. But, Don't fall in a trap in the Istanbul trap, you know, keep going, 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 and then you spend the whole, the whole time in Istanbul. Okay. That's, some, that's something that I would, I would give as an advice. Safety wise, the country is pretty safe, yeah. actually. Okay. Uh, I'm going to tell you just a little story that, that happened to us the, the, the second day in Istanbul. Uh, we couldn't find accommodation, so we're trying to find Airbnbs, I mean, the cheapest options. And we found a place uh, not far away from the center, from the Taksim. Mm -hmm. 
and we we that, the place looked fine we went there we the, the, even the room was clean the people were nice and then the following day we were taking the bus from istanbul to chanakali so uh, in the morning to, we 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 booked a uber so the uber came it was a taxi and when he saw me he said well i think it's a girl who booked the the, the, the taxi he said yeah it's my wife she's coming over and then while discussing with the guy he said if if i knew it was a guy i would not have come here what are you, what are you guys doing here wow. because apparently we were in a place where drug dealers are located <laughs> where a lot of you know it's it's a really dangerous yeah. spot apparently but it didn't feel that way so but again coming from morocco maybe we have a different perspective about what safety is you know sure. uh, we, we expect the worst now we expect the worst i mean for, in morocco we some places don't 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 look yeah. look dangerous to us you know because yeah. they're just other places but maybe to some others they are they're not they're not safe but from our experience it's it's really one of the safest countries we've been to actually yeah it's like the backpack story Yeah, we have another story. I mean, if we keep yeah. going with our stories, we're not going to finish with me <laughs> to tell this one. <laughs> yeah, come on. Okay. So, uh, so as I said, we traveled a lot by bus. Um, and so this time we were coming from Cappadocia uh, and going to Ankara. And we took a bus, I think it was like a four or five hours uh, hour drive. And we had a, <coughs> our backpacks uh in the how do we call it in trunk in the trunk. trunk so we arrived to ankara we get down and we're looking for our backpacks and there was nothing like it was all empty and i mean thankfully we had all valuables with us you know the camera money passports etc but all of our clothes and stuff everything was there uh and so we didn't understand what was happening so we asked about our backpacks and they 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 were like okay just wait a sec they start to I mean we understood that they're gone I yeah mean, they we said understood we don't that know the backpacks yeah. are not there anymore so they didn't know where they were but they said okay just wait a sec let us make some calls and of course no English so it was a little bit uh, complicated at first halal. they made some not halal, halal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the only word <laughs> yeah. Um and then we were just waiting we saw that they were discussing and arguing at some at some point because there were two people and then just to sum it up um one of the guys the steward because like you have stewards in the bus he took out our bags in another station because he thought that other people that I mean there were other people's bags so took them out just put them there and then and they then they, they, they left going So they said, okay, uh, we will try to bring you your bags uh, tonight, 11 p.m. And we were like, no, we have a flight today to another city and we cannot miss the flight. And then we said, could you maybe send the bags to Istanbul? Somehow we were yeah. losing hope, actually. Yeah. We know that in our heads, in our minds, we said, you know, the backpacks are gone. We have our valuables. We're not going to ruin it. We just keep going. And then that's yeah. okay. That's, that's what we thought. We never we, we didn't think that they would bring them so we said you know what just take them to Istanbul when we come we'll back see. We, we'll see yeah and so yeah that's we decided not yeah, just to keep going with our trip and we said okay we'll be back in three days to Istanbul so just send them and they did the like the, the conclusion is that we got to we Istanbul. came back to Istanbul we found our bags I mean it was intact. just like yeah intact and Everything was inside. They were not even open because we realized that we, we actually forgot some valuable yes. stuff there. So, but they were not yeah. even touched just like that. And we realized that the, Turkey, the Turkish yeah. are really proud people and they are really, really pay attention to their reputation. They don't want to scratch it at all. If something happens, they feel re- more responsible about it than, than you who lost the thing. True. Yeah. Wow. But yeah, wow. safety was safe. I mean, I'm not sure that it, if, if it happened in, in France, yeah. I'm not sure I would, I would see my bags again. <laughs> <Sure. laughs> I'm really sure about that. But, But one thing people gave us was for safety in Istanbul. They, all, they told us just to be aware. Uh, yeah, be careful. If someone speaks really good English and tells you, you know what, guys, I'm going to bring you somewhere, you're going to have fun, then be careful. 
That's that's the tip mm. we, we had. We didn't have any bad experience, but we've people, been told that. We've yeah, been told a lot of scammers be, who speak mm. really good English and they just target foreigners and take them to you know to to pubs to to to, to bars, to bars over, and yeah. then they they will have to pay for everyone because uh, the scammer has like a deal with the bar with the place. You know, so it's uh, so it happens. We we we've mm. we've heard a lot about that. Wow. So what is it like with the authorities in the country? Let's say you are in a situation where you need help from, from the police. Is it easily accessible? Um, are they reliable, do you think, from, from your, I mean, not that you were involved? Yeah, I mean, we, we were not involved, but we, we, we learned from our friend who lives there for like nearly two years now mm -hmm. that there is an app on the phone that you just install. If you have a problem, just click the app And the, and the police will come over right away. For women, mostly. Like if you're harassed by a man? Anything. If anything yeah, happens, you anything. just click the button yeah. and the police just come right away. And it works. And it works, wow. apparently. That's yeah. amazing. Do you guys remember the name of the app? Uh, no, but we can... We, we can share it. Yeah, yeah, we can share it later on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And also, we noticed that, you, for example, when we arrived, it was midnight uh, on the 31st of December. So, you know new year uh, a lot of policemen were there uh, but it might seem scary at first because you see a lot of people and a lot of policemen just wandering around but it's actually safer you feel safe because everyone has to be you know in check and in line and they make you feel safe because they're here you see you feel that they're here for a reason and it's just to protect you in case there's something bad happening That's awesome. They, they showed up with our backpacks and they, 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 they came over and I don't know what they thought that we had in, I mean, I understand mm -hmm. them, but they said, you know what, guys, we need to control your bags because you're in a, you know, in a place and we don't know what's in the bag. So we got to make sure that everybody's safe. So yeah, there, there are a lot of police. They, they, they're even like civilians. I mean, you don't see them wearing their, 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 their costumes. I mean, the police, uh, so just, they just approach you and say, no, I'm a police, so I want to. I want to see if everything's okay. I want to make sure that uh, that you don't have anything dangerous for for others. Wow! And you so guys had wise. no. I, I, sorry, I was just gonna say yeah. you guys had pretty heavy backpacks. I was just looking at your photos and say, "Wow, walking in that for many days, I'd be done." <laughs> you you would feel how heavy they are when you're on an uphill. So when we were doing, we, there was a hike, I mean, several hikes that we did. And at some point, like, you, yeah, you would feel the, the weight yeah. on your shoulder. But I think we got used to it somehow, yeah. yeah. Because we did a lot of walking. At first, we walked for 20 or 24 kilometers a day. Uh, so, <coughs> and sometimes we had the back, <laughs> backpacks with us all day long. So, but we got used to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay, so tell me more about what it's like to, to travel as a couple uh, when it comes to the planning, when it comes to just, uh, you know, interaction throughout the trip. Um, I know that traveling solo or traveling with friends is not the same as traveling as a couple. Do you have moments of frustration? Do you have moments where there is a disconnect at some point? Tell me more about that. <laughs> Uh, I think it happens sometimes, but uh, the things that we've been traveling for so long that we, we have like uh, our, let's say our mechanisms, you know, when something happens, we know how to deal with it. Uh, the planning, I know that it's, Iman is the best at planning, so uh, I, I, would I, I would never I argue, I mean, when she's planning, she said, we're going to do something, I just trust her you know, blindly because uh, <laughs> she, she does it like better than anyone I know. Uh, when it comes to argue when we're not the kind that argue a lot actually we we more talk but yeah we have our differences sometimes i want to do something she wants to do something else and we just need to find you know the right adjustments yeah. how do we deal with it i think it's just comes natural but i think we we, we got used to let's say if if she wants to do something and i'm not really interested i would still do it for her you know and same for me she would still do it for me so There is this little uncomfort when someone doesn't want to go somewhere, doesn't want to do something, but has to do it for the other, but we kind of accept it, so. And usually we like doing the same things, so it's really rare. That also when, helps, yeah. yeah, that helps a lot. Yes, yeah, <laughs> and we discuss in something that we don't, like, no one will raise his voice. Like, I won't raise my voice, he won't raise his voice, so it's, we're just going to discuss about it in a calm manner, 
and you know just uh, but i think but i think we've been married for six years now so it's uh, there's no secrets no <laughs> you know all the mess are dropped so we, we have like our our, our you know our way how to, to deal with situations but, you know they say that if you want to if you really want to know a person you gotta travel with them so mm -hmm. and i think that's true uh because you get to see the person in different shades if we can say so and Since we've been traveling for a while together, uh, we just like we 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 found our comfort uh, traveling together. So we enjoy it, and for us, it's just a good thing to to do together. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. And um, I know that with some couples, every couple is different. But there are couples who would, you know, when you're traveling for a long period of time, you would take days off. You go and experience something, and then the other partner mm -hmm. go and experience something else. Do you guys ever do that? No. We never do that. Oh. <laughs> that we, we have this, I mean, I'm going to give you a concrete example. Uh, the first time we went to the U.S. together, uh, she wanted to see, uh, you want to go to Broadway to see The Lion King. And I wanted to watch an NBA game. She had no interest in my NBA game and I had no interest <laughs> in The Lion King. <laughs> But we still do, did it together because uh, at some point we say, I mean, if... I don't know if for us it's true, but I don't know if it's true. I mean, happiness is not only real when, sh when shared. So okay. I would still share what she wants, even though if I have no interest in it. And maybe I would change my mind. And I changed and my mind actually I mean. by, with the Lion King. Yeah. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah. So that's, uh, that, that's the thing, actually. We, we, um, for us, it's hard to answer this question because we've been knowing each other for so long. And we've been married also for, for six years now. So it's... It's, That's awesome. For sure, there, there were yeah. some adjustments to make in the beginning. Sure. I was, uh, before the live stream, I had to go to your profile and go back in time just to see what your travel style was like. And I came across your photo from your marriage. I'm like, oh my God, I won't even recognize them. They look so different. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, the curly. Yeah, the hair. <laughs> Pushing the hair. Yeah. yeah. No, That's no, awesome. No. But yeah, I mean, we grew together with each other and we learned so many yeah. things, new things, and that's how we... It's not always it. easy. I'm not saying that it's no. easy and it's always like, it's you know, perfect. But, uh, but, but, but still, I think when you have your habits and you know, it, you know, it's some mechanism to use, you know, just like, we both are stubborn, so we have both yeah. the same flaws, we have both the same quality, so it's, yeah. <laughs> somehow, sometimes it crash, it, I mean, it's, it's, there, there's like this clash of ideas I want. If we have some differences, but let's say we, we learn how to deal with it. Now we just, we can use many things. Yeah, and I think communication is important. I mean, we're still working on it, something that you keep working on for so many years, but it's something important for us. So that's something we work on constantly. That's awesome. And definitely, like you said, Iman, with, the, with travel, you get to know people more and you get to make your relationship stronger, which is amazing. Wow, I, I don't know how time went by this fast. We've been going live for 48 minutes. So, um, before, no. yeah. so before we wrap things up, I want to learn a little bit more about content creation. You guys create some valuable content on uh, your Instagram here, Wild Curlies, and also on your YouTube channel. Um, I've watched some of your videos and they are just impressive. Um, tell us more about content creation. Do you just do it for fun? Do you have future plans with the content that you create? What are you trying to, to do with your content creation? This one's for you. He's our yeah. YouTube leader. <laughs> and she's the Instagram. <laughs> Instagram. That okay. is getting really good. We actually, just, uh, we, we, we travel, we've been traveling for so long now, but we realized that the memory that we keep is only on the photos. You know, we have photos that we, we have all over the place and some photos are completely forgotten about, unless if we just go to our computers. And, mm -hmm. and we thought, you know, on our first trip, when we traveled, when we went on bike, bike, bike packing trip, it was for 10 days and it was uh, during COVID. And at the same time, we were sharing our stories, you know, just the stories on Instagram. And it was your cousin, actually, Zuhair. Yes, yes. And he said, you know what? All the videos that you made, guys, why don't you just, like, make a wrap-up of all the trip and let us watch? Because we have family, like, pretty much all, of, I mean, in different places. And just to share with us, share with us what you're doing. So in the beginning, we just started doing it just to share with the family, you know. This is what we're doing. This is what we did. 
et cetera, et cetera. And then we, once we shared it, we realized that a lot of people are interested actually in what we're doing. And we decided that we wanted also to provide value. If we go somewhere, we want to give tips, we're going to give uh, our opinion. We also want to share the good moments that we spent there. So we, we bought a camera, uh, we bought a drone just to improve the quality. And we started like just learning, you know, taking YouTube tutorials, taking the, the, the footage, learning how to put one after the other, learning how to make the transitions, learning mm -hmm. how to tell the story from the start to, to tell the end. And we got the chance also to meet with one of the, our greatest inspirations actually, his, his name is Uthman Zolati. I don't know if you know him. Yes. He's a working guy, so the, the guy is just amazing. And we got the chance actually to meet him in Turkey. Awesome. Uh, the guy is just amazing. So whenever I need something, I just get in touch with him, and he's always open. He's he's give me he gives me advice, and that, that that's that's something that helps me improve the quality of the content. And regarding Instagram, Iman is 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 taking care of everything from Instagram yeah, point I of mean... view. And we do it just for fun. I enjoy actually this, this, you know, we, I think we all have certain needs like food, like, like, like enjoying our time, but there's also the need of creating something, you know, just from scratch, having something, just having the, like just unleashing the creativity. And that's what I've tried to do with, 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 with editing, with video editing. And I'm enjoying it so far. So uh, yeah. I'm not doing it for any purpose, actually. I'm not planning to make a career or YouTuber or something. Yeah. Just sharing, you know, the videos with the people we know, and hopefully, if uh, if if uh, why if, not? Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, if people enjoy it, and I would definitely do more. It's a yeah. little bit tough to combine with work. Yeah, is it, uh, it we requires... post like a video every month or every two months, so yeah, it's uh, we're not like doing like regularly or something. But ideally, I mean, if it works out. Uh, yeah, that would be something we could consider for the future for us. Yeah. Awesome. So for folks who are watching us and who are not following uh, Iman and Mehdi from Wild Curlies, go ahead and follow them on Instagram and check their YouTube channel. Uh, I really like your long format videos. They are very inspiring and you get to see places in, in France, around in Europe in general and uh, in, uh, in Turkey. It's really, it's really nice. Thank you. Awesome. We have also the English subtitles for the people who don't understand yeah. English because we speak Moroccan in our videos. Oh, <laughs> it's good. a mix between in Moroccan as you might know so we try to put English subtitles for because we have friends we have who friends don't who don't speak uh, the language but we were surprised actually how many people who don't even speak Moroccan who, who watch the videos from through the comments to the you know the messages that we receive the emails it's uh, yeah it's 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 really uh, something that uh, makes us really happy about yeah. the that is so awesome. Well, I'm so, I'm so happy that we got to, to meet you virtually and uh, hopefully we can meet in the future in person. And uh, yeah. yeah, I really enjoyed this. Time went by so fast. We have a few more minutes here. If you guys have any last uh, thoughts that you want to share with all of us here or any parting words. <laughs> oh, just do what you like if you like traveling just go explore your neighborhood your city your town your country but uh, just do something and just go out there and yeah that would be i think my uh, i would only advice. say that we only only live once and uh, we're only young once so there are certain things that we can do at any age but there are certain things that we can only do when we're young so these things that, I mean, by young, I mean, you know, young mentally and physically able to do harsh things. So I think this is the time when you can do certain things and you have to do that not to have any regrets. That's, that's our, our philosophy. For example, when we travel and we do some certain, like, uh, we choose certain places or we choose certain style of accommodation. It's something that we can do at our, our age. I mean, it's okay that just put the pitch the tent and, and, and do it. But maybe we can do it at six years old. <laughs> the thing that I would like to say is the fact that if, if you want to do something, just, just do it. And, 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 and as long as you have the ability, the physical ability to do certain things, just keep enjoying it because at some point we're not going to be able to do it. Absolutely. It probably won't be that easy to log that heavy backpack when you are seven years old. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs>
<laughs> this was the time for the hotels, you know, with the sun and with the the the, 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 the all the yeah, the cocktails yeah. and all the, the fancy stuff. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, guys. I appreciate your time. So happy that we, we got to, to chat today. And thank you to everyone who joined us today. The live stream is going to be up on my IGTV if you want to go and rewatch it again. And uh, I'm so excited for your race. I will be keeping an eye out and make sure that you guys win. <laughs> for us. Thank you very much. Thank yes. you very much. We've been a pleasure actually talking to you, yeah. getting to know you Thanks virtually. So and hopefully we're going gonna to meet soon and maybe we could do some, 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 some trip together. Absolutely. would love to, to meet you guys at some point. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.